And God has been right smack in the middle of our lives from the time we first started hanging out and every day since. God has been right smack in the middle of our lives. And we have had a blast. Um, we had a um, we had a ministry in Washington. It was called Mercy and Truth Ministries. You know, God, God is all about mercy, and He's all about truth. And then uh, God sent us over to Hawaii. And uh, recently, we have started uh, started uh, Monkey Pod Tree Ministries, which is kind of an interesting name, but it's what it is. And as it turns out. Uh, we, we fairly often go out to Pokai Bay or the Boat Harbor, Waianae Boat Harbor, and minister to the folks out there. And we're always under a monkey pod tree. <laughs> so go figure. And uh, years ago, God gave Vicki a vision of this tree, which really represented us in our ministry. But that was before she even knew what a monkey pod tree was. God had given her a vision. And she gets here, and we're on the Big Island on vacation 10, 11 years ago, and she says, that's the tree. <laughs> so anyway God is a blast God is a blast and um, I think everybody probably has a copy of the notes um, if we didn't run out we brought 25 copies and I don't know if we have enough to go around or not um, uh, and we'll see if we stay with the notes because Holy Spirit is, is he's Lord right and we really want to cooperate with what God has for us and what God is up to. And so we just really want to go with it. And we say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And you are welcome in our hearts. And you are welcome to use each one of us. And what I want to say is if anybody needs ministry, even while I'm talking or we're talking or whatever, and you know, you're like, you know, I could do some ministry right now. Just put your hand up, and if either Vicky or Vicky will get over there, or one of the one of the ministry team from Encounter, somebody will get over there. So if, if you get to the point where you know, you're just like I could use, or just walk up here, I don't care. Um, if you want some ministry, you know, Jesus never says wait. You know, I, I've read the Bible. I don't know how many times I've read the Bible. I've been through the Gospels over and over and over, hanging out with Jesus. And I don't see Jesus saying wait, you know, unless, you know, he, he waited for a couple of days. Lazarus, Lazarus was basically dead. So he waited a couple of days to get there to raise him from the dead. But as a rule, Jesus doesn't say wait if, we're, if we need him. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Right? Lord, I need you. So, um, Can I say something? Yes. <laughs> Lots of times we, we kind of tag Pete. Because we um, kind of trigger each other and something comes up. But the, the two big things that we tend to minister in the most is against the spirit of fear, bringing in peace. And the other one is healing. And, uh, you know, with what's going on around the world right now, there's a lot of people having problems with anxiety. And I had someone call me the other day. And God delivered me from a spirit of terror um, about 21, 22 years ago and uh, set me free. Put me under a waterfall of his peace. Yeah. A month later, he came into my life. Yeah. And we got married five months after that, and our, our ministry has been imparting peace yeah. to people. So I thought, well, maybe before we even begin tonight, maybe we should address that if anybody would like to be ministered to uh, against the spirit of fear right now. Um, I will uh, tell you a little bit of how the Lord delivered me. I was uh, really afflicted for, it was 11 months. I felt like I was just holding on to my sanity by my fingernails. And one day the Lord gave me a vision. And at this point, he was talking to me so much. I was trying to write it all down. But it was getting to be so much that I started speaking it into a tape recorder. And so I had this vision on a cassette tape. And he showed me that I was in an ocean, like a grayish green ocean, full of fear and confusion. And then my head popped out and I looked and everything was serene and clear and beautiful. Blue sky, sun shining, birds singing, serenity, and the 
Lord said, I'm going to deliver you out of the atmosphere of fear and confusion into this place of peace. And you can hear the urgency in my voice on the tape, yes, Lord, please do it. Do it. And a month later, he did. And what precipitated that was he showed me part of my problem was I was trying to fix my own life. And so if the enemy was attacking me, I was this little lamb jumping on the wolves, trying to attack them. And I was just getting chewed up and spit out, and I was just this mutilated little bloody lamb. Wow. And uh, I saw the shepherd, tall Jesus, walk, went over to him, he picked me up in his arms. And my ear went on his chest and I could hear his heartbeat. Wow. And he was just holding me and loving me and healing me. And he took his rod and he held it out against the wolves and protected me. Wow. And I could just rest in his arms. And so um, I had come to a place of surrender. I had gotten saved and filled with the Holy Ghost just about ready to have my anniversary about 50 years ago when I was 16. But it took till I was 45 to come to that place of complete surrender and trust, to trust him with everything. And so the next vision was God was like this. And I was this little baby. And I was crawling up his arm, and I went into the palm of his hand, and I curled up and went to sleep. And he took a warm, fuzzy pink blanket and put it over me, and I was just sleeping in his hand. And I was at rest, and I had come to that place of surrender, and I was delivered of the spirit of fear. And I was under a waterfall of his peace, and I just reveled in it after 11 months of extreme torment that was so bad that I didn't want to live anymore if it was going to continue, I finally was in that place of peace. So let's just uh, bow our heads for a minute. I just pray against that spirit of fear that would be afflicting anyone in this room and would command it to go and to leave right now in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father, that each person will be able to trust you completely with every concern, every worry, every area of their life. Just lay it down and say, I trust you because you're my good shepherd and you love me. And I impart the spirit of peace, shalom, peace of God, into your minds and hearts and spirits right now in Jesus' name. Be free. IFM International Fellowship of Ministries uh, years ago. I don't know. I don't even know what year that was. 2002, 2003, four somewhere back there. Uh, they prophesied over us. You guys have an anointing of peace. You have this mantle of peace. This anointing of peace. I really hate stress, and I really can't stand striving and wrestling against things that I have no control over, you know, and just wrestling and trying to get everything lined up with my own strength, because it just doesn't work, you know, it just doesn't, it just wears us out, and it keeps us busy, and that's one of the ways that the devil keeps us distracted, is he keeps us busy trying to wrestle our lives into line, or wrestle our brains into line, he just keeps us busy, yeah. and out of peace, but our lives will be so much more fruitful. Right? Because when you're moving in peace, you know, there's not a lot of fear in peace. And there's not a lot of fear in love. So when you're filled with love and you're filled with the peace of God, you just, you just on cruise control. Even when stuff is happening, you're just cruising through. And, you know, he's, the, he's my prince. He's my prince of peace. He's a good God. He is. And he's got good things for us. Yeah. You know, he's got good things. Like I said, I don't know where this is going to go yet tonight, but God has got good things for us. All right? The, uh, I've said it for many years. I think that the uh, most important thing for each of us to know as a child of God, about God, the most important thing for you to know about God is that God loves you. 
You're already a child of God, right? But if you don't know that he loves you passionately and without reservation, then it can be a little hard to receive from him sometimes because you feel like he's a judge. You know, some of us, some of us have, have uh, lived these lives with all this condemnation or self-condemnation. Well, that doesn't come from the Lord. You know, there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? There's no condemnation for us unless we put it on ourselves or we agree with the devil putting on us, putting wow. on us yeah. right? And so you don't want to partner with that. Condemnation starts coming your way. You don't want to partner with that. You don't want to agree with that. We don't partner with that. We don't say, yeah, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I'm such a jerk. I'm so stupid. No, no, no. We don't want to agree with that. We don't want to partner with that nonsense. Because he set us free. Right? And you are a child of the King of Kings. Okay, so I might be jumping ahead of my notes a little bit, but you're a child of God. And everybody knows, or they should know, every youngster should know, that if somebody knocks on the door to come in, you know, they want to come in, and that youngster doesn't know them, they're not going to let him in. Yeah. They're not going to let him in. And the youngest child of God has that authority of their house, right? This house right here. I don't have to let whatever comes along in. Wow. You know? If it's not from our Father, don't let it in. Wow, that's yeah, so good. good. You know? Yeah. Don't let it in. You know, you can't, uh, I think Kevin Hagen said, you can't prevent a bird from flying over your head, but you don't, you don't have to let it make a nest in your hair. <laughs> Right? So we don't let that stuff in. You know, just because it comes knocking on our door and fear comes knocking on our door and says, you know, you really ought to be really stressed out. Did you see the news? You really ought to be stressed out. Did you see the news? You don't have to let that in. Wow. Yeah. yeah, there's bad stuff happening, but I'm in peace. I'm not letting that in to my house. All right, I'm not letting it in. I'm not going to meditate on, on it. what things soever are perfect, lovely, pure, so on. Philippians 4, think on these things. That means we don't think about all the stuff that's going on that's terrible. We think on the lovely things and the pure things and, and uh, the trustworthy things. And uh, that's what we think on. That's what we feed on. You know, if, uh, if, uh, if you're a little low on protein in your body, you need to eat more protein. Sometimes we're a little low on certain revelations from God. We need to feed on that stuff. Feed on the love of God feed on the love of God. You can't get too much of the love of God on you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you can't get too big of a revelation of the love of God. Because God is love. God is love. And he loves us perfectly. And he loves us passionately. And he's 100% for us. He's done everything he needs to do for us. He's done everything he needs to do to give us the victory. Right? So what the devil uses is intimidation and ignorance. Our ignorance. He uses intimidation and ignorance. You know, the word says, I uh, can't remember the passage, but my people perish for lack of knowledge. So it's what we don't know. It's what we don't know that and get us in trouble. And that can take us down. You know, if I don't know that God loves me, then I'll go through life with this dark cloud of condemnation over my head, hoping that I make it to heaven. You know, but I know that he loves me. I know that he loves me. And I want to say something else, and this wasn't in my notes either, but the kingdom of God, in fact, I haven't got to my notes. <laughs> but the kingdom of God is the family business. What it is. We're co laborers with God, joint heirs with Christ. He's our father. It's the family business. It's the family business, you know? We further the kingdom of God. 
You know, we, we manifest the kingdom of God when, when we pray for the sick, set people free, witness to the person on the street, whatever we do, whatever we're doing in the name of the Lord, we're manifesting the kingdom of God. We're furthering the kingdom of God. It's our family business. He's given us the tools. He's given us his word. He's given us his spirit. He's not left us as orphans. We're not out there running around hoping, hoping, hoping. You know, I hope this is right. I hope this is right. He's with us every step of the way. He's with us every step of the way. He's with us. He hasn't left us alone. Okay? And he's not going to. You know, he's not going to. Sometimes we don't know some things. Sometimes we've got to drill and really dig down and you know, get into the really seek the presence of the Lord and press in and press in and press in. Lord, I've got to have this. I've got to, I've got to understand your, your love. I need a revelation of your love. I need comprehension of your love. And we just keep pressing and we keep soaking and we read the word and we just keep feeding on it and feeding on it. And all of a sudden, boom, we're going, oh, wow. And it becomes so real. It becomes so real. Yeah. Many years ago, I had a... Uh, I had a bad back. My back was pretty messed up. When I was 22, 23, back there sometime, the chiropractor said that you have the back of a 45-year-old man. And uh, I was borrowing my dad's back brace because my dad had had a bad back. So I figured, well, my dad had a bad back. I've got a bad back. You know, I figured this generational nonsense. And um, so I'm wearing the back brace and I'm popping these, you know, pain pills now and then. And um, I'm going to the chiropractor, and then I, you know, then I do things at work that hurt myself, and, and then I do it all over again. And finally, one night, a friend of mine is praying for me. And he's got his hand on my back. He's just praying and praying and praying. All of a sudden, I had a vision. So I'm pressing in. I need something from God, right? I need, I need something from God. Every one of us needs something from God. And I'm pressing in because I need something, Lord. And so my friend Larry's praying for me. And all of a sudden, I had a vision of Jesus when he was at the post, whipping post. And every time that whip came down on him, he said to me, by these stripes you were healed. And this happened over and over and over. I don't know how many times that happened. I don't know how many times he said, by these stripes you were healed. But all of a sudden, bam, I got it. I got it. And I was instantly healed. And I haven't had the trouble since then that I had up to that point. Okay. But, but let me qualify that. There were times I had to I had to stand in faith to maintain my healing. Because, you know, in the weeks and months after that healing, the devil kept trying to talk me out of it. And I'd be working on a pecan mine and going up a ladder and the devil would say to me, you know, your back is still bad or whatever, you know, your back is hurting, your back is bad. And I just keep confessing the word, by his stripes I was healed, by his stripes I was healed. And then the pain is gone. And then the next day maybe, you know, and I just keep confessing the word because I'm not going to let the devil steal yeah. what God has done. We don't want to let, we don't want to let the devil steal what God has done for us. Sometimes we have to hang on you know, sometimes we have to wrestle and maintain, but that's really good for us because it builds our faith. Mm. You know, it's 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 not always the best thing for a child to just give them everything they want without making sure they take care of it, without them valuing it. They need to value, you know, we need to value what we receive from our Father. We need to value what he's done for us. So Jesus died on the cross for us, right? He shed his blood for us. He went to, he went to hell for us. But hell couldn't keep him because Jesus is an innocent man. But he went to hell for you and I. And I don't know the extent of his torment. I don't, I don't know all that kind of stuff. You know, stuff happened. But Jesus rose from the dead. Because hell couldn't keep him. He rose from the dead for my justification. I don't have to go there because he's already done it. I don't have to carry sickness around my body all my life because he's already done it. 
I don't have to walk around all stressed out without any peace because he's already, he is the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe I'll look at my notes. I do have something to share again. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I got something hot off the press from God today. I got a, a vision from him. The scripture I've been meditating on is Romans 8.2. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus frees me from the law of sin and death. And so I can say it over and over and over and meditate on that. And today the Lord said to me that I'm in Continual, I'm in a state of continual victory. And he gave me a vision of me like um, like at a, a track meet when you have a race and, and you cross the finish line. And there's people all around, it's sunny, it's the you know festive like like it always is when you go to those things. And um, but the vision begins with me on the other side of the finish line holding a trophy, and I've, I've won, and I'm the victor, but I look like I'm ready to be picked up for a date or something. I mean, not a hair's out of place. I'm not sweating. I'm not panting. I'm completely relaxed. I'm just standing there smiling, holding my trophy, and it's because Jesus ran the race, and, and I get to be the victor because of everything he did. And so I get to walk in victory because of what he did. And, and so I'm not sweating because I didn't do anything by my own strength. I didn't do any works. It was just a, a free gift. But what he told me is I'm in a continual state of victory. It is finished. The finish line has been crossed. And so no matter what I find, what situation I find myself in, I will now see myself as already victorious. And just a side note, I'm really thankful my mother, she wanted to name me Victoria. I've needed a lot of victory in my life. I was named after her dad, Victor. And so I'm just really thankful she named me that because it's really helped. <laughs> We really like doing it like this here, little yeah. tag team. It's so good. Uh, <laughs> we enjoy that. It, uh, it's just good. Yeah. Right? It's just got good things from God. <laughs> and so do I. Yeah. So we share, right? We believe the Bible says every part supplies. Right? That means every part supplies. That means every one of us has got something. Every one of us has got something. <clears throat> Every one. David says in Psalms 103, verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. We talked about what God does. You know, he heals and he forgives. And he heals. Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundations of the earth. And that's kind of a hard one to wrap our mind around sometimes. But Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundations of the earth. <clears throat> so God had forgiveness and healing in mind a long, long time ago. It didn't come all of a sudden when Adam and Eve fell in the garden. And because Jesus is the lamb slain before them the foundations of the earth. It didn't just come to God when, when they fell in the garden and go, oh God, I gotta, I gotta do something, I gotta do something. You know, he already had a plan, Jesus. Yeah, how's that work? But anyway, Jesus is the lamb slain for the foundations of the earth. It was always in God's mind to forgive our sins. It was always in God's mind to provide us peace. It was always in God's mind heal the sick. It was always in God's mind. Right? Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 145, verse 8 and 9. This is one of my 
favorite most passages in the whole Bible. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. How many are glad that God is slow to anger? You know? I'm really glad that God is slow to anger because if he had a quick temper like I've had in the past, I would have been dust a long time ago. <laughs> and so what do you? <laughs> right? You know, if we got what... And, and so... Uh, Mercy, what is mercy? Mercy is, is not getting what you deserve. <laughs> he's slow to anger, he doesn't have a quick temper, and he's great in mercy. It's his disposition that we don't get what we deserve. You know, when we deserve when we deserve a, a beating, God would prefer to show mercy. Amen. Amen. He forgives all of our iniquities and heals all our diseases. And iniquities isn't just sin. It's not just the deed. Iniquities is the bent to do that deed. It's the perversion to do the thing. It's more than, it's more than the act of stepping on your neighbor's foot. It's like, I'm going to step on his foot because he's a jerk. <laughs> you know, it's... Because he deserves it. <laughs> right? That's the iniquity. That's the you know the perversion of right and wrong. So and he heals all of our diseases. And I like to when speaking of diseases, I like to look at disease as anything that brings dis-ease. Whatever brings dis-ease. Right? Whatever brings this ease, he heals. He takes care of. Whatever's wrong. Matthew 8, 2. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy was cleansed. And if you look into the original languages a little more, it's really Jesus not just saying, I am willing. He's saying, I am always willing. You know, get out your Strong's and your Thayer's and, so, and your Weast, you know, word studies and things like this here. Um, and you'll find out Jesus is always willing. Matthew 8, 24, Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. Everyone that was brought to Jesus, he healed. He didn't, we don't have any record of Jesus saying, you go to the back of the line, you need to work some things out. You know, We don't have any evidence in the scripture of Jesus doing that. Whoever came to Jesus is exercising faith in him, right? And the exercise of faith because they, they're trusting him. The exercise of faith gives us forgiveness. It's not the groveling, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him righteousness. It's the believe in God, it's the, it's the uh, it, whosoever shall come to me, you know. It's not the groveling, it's the coming to him. How many times when we read scripture, when somebody, Jesus healed somebody, he said, your sins are forgiven. Right? They exercised faith. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Rise up and walk. Right? Your sins are forgiven. Rise up. And so, so there's, we don't need any of this, any of this probably, and we don't need any of this, Lord, I'm just so unworthy, and all this nonsense. I mean, that's just garbage. This garbage is not from God. <clears throat> Luke 7, 12. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd of the city was with her. When Jesus saw her, he had compassion on her, and said, Do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. 
He says, I do what I see my father do. This is his heart of compassion. This is his disposition. He sees his mother that's brokenhearted. She lost her only son, her husband, she's a widow already. You know, so she's, her heart's been already broken. And, um, and then her son dies, her only son. And Jesus, moved with compassion, gave her back to the son. That's the heart of God. That's our father. That's our father. All this other stuff, and I don't care, you know, we make up all kinds of excuses why things don't happen the way we think they should sometimes. But our God's, our Father's heart is full of compassion. Our Father's heart is redemption. Our Father's heart is setting the captives free. You know, I don't care what somebody might think or, you know, you get some excuses and we make excuses and we go, yeah, but and our Father's heart trumps yeah, but. You know, or you don't understand, our Father's heart trumps all that. You know, he doesn't think like we do that are natural. Now, you and I as believers, <clears throat> we have the mind of Christ. And as we spend time with the Lord and spend time in His Word and get our minds renewed, we start thinking like Christ. We start thinking like God. If we're not thinking like God, then we need to get our minds renewed. If we're not thinking like God and acting like Jesus, to get our minds renewed. It's, it's as simple as that. Paul says, be imitators of me as I imitate Christ. So we need to be, we ought to be imitating Jesus. Right? We ought to be imitating our Lord. <clears throat> understand the value you place on us as your inheritance. And Lord, fill us up with that love. Fill us up with your love. Lord, give us that comprehension of your amazing love. Fill us up with that love. Jesus. Jesus. 1 John 3.8 last half of the verse says, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If that was his will and his purpose then, that hasn't changed. 2 Corinthians 1.20, for all the promises of God, all the promises of God are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. All the promises of God. All the promises of God, they're for us. And you, can't, you can't say that, well, that was for them, because it's for us. John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy, I have come that they might have life and they, they might have it more abundantly. <clears throat> if somebody or something is stealing your health or your goods or your family, it's not God. I don't know how many times I've heard even people that ought to be mature in the Lord saying, well, God put this on me to, you know, teach me a lesson. He put this on me to like learn patience or whatever, but that's that's not Bible. That's not God. He did not put that on you. God did not put a sickness on you. He did not put sickness on you. It's 
not his idea. It didn't originate from him. <clears throat> now, take a look in, uh, does anybody use the Passion Bible in here? Passion Translation, I really like it for some things. Some things I'm like, I don't know about this here, but for a lot of things, Passion Translation is really cool. Uh, it communicates the Lord's heart quite well. And so in, in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, so just previous to this, Jesus had given his uh, disciples, he sent, he sent out 35 teams of two, basically, to go out and to heal the sick, cast out devils, and to basically do what he'd been showing them how to do. And then they come back. When the 70 missionaries returned to Jesus, they were ecstatic with joy, telling him, Lord, even the demons obeyed us when we commanded them in your name. Then Jesus replied, now this is really cool, while you were ministering, I watched Satan topple until he fell suddenly from heaven like lightning to the ground. While you were ministering, while you are healing the sick, I'm, while you are casting out devils, I'm watching that devil fall. I'm watching, I'm watching that devil fall. While you are ministering, each one of us, while we are ministering, and the devil goes down, the Lord sees it. The Lord sees it. <clears throat> Verse 19. Now you understand that I have imparted to you all my authority. Now this was before Pentecost. They weren't even filled with the Holy Ghost yet. Now you understand. Now you get it that I have imparted to you all my authority to trample over his kingdom. You will trample over or upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. Nothing from hell, as you're walking in Jesus' authority, nothing from hell can harm you. That's what Jesus said. As you're walking in his authority, Nothing can harm you. You can't be touched from the enemy as you're walking in his authority. Because that's what the Bible says. That's not everybody's experience because we bought the lie. Or because we're ignorant of some of our rights and privileges and responsibilities. Right? That's what the, that's what the devil trips us up is, is intimidation and, and ignorance. So I need to know I need to know my job description. I need to know how far my authority goes. I need to know that, that my God always hears me. And I need to trust him. Because sometimes that's not our, it doesn't seem to be our experience because we have so much of that other junk in our soul that bogs us down, but Jesus sets us free from all that stuff. He sets us free from all that. Verse 20, however, your real source of joy isn't merely that these spirits submit to your authority, but that your names are written in the journals of heaven and that you belong to God's kingdom. This is the true source of your authority. The authority we walk in comes through relationship with our Father. He's our Father. The authority we walk in comes because he's our father. And I was talking about the, the, the child opening the door, saying, no, you can't come in. Who are you? We don't know you. Get out of here. I mean, some kids are bold enough like that. Some aren't, but, but no, you can't come in. Get out of here. We don't let the devil into our souls. When the devil starts messing with our family, no, no, no. In Jesus' name, no. Because I have authority as a son of God. You have authority as a, as a son or daughter of God. Not because you've always done the right thing. But because you're a son or daughter of God. Amen. Wow. <laughs> that's good. Because that's relationship. We've all missed it. Every one of us has missed it. We've all missed it doesn't mean you don't have any authority. 
It just means you missed it, you step in it, you get back up, say, Father, I'm sorry, shake it off, and move on. You know? The righteous man, though he fall down seven times, gets back up. Anybody in here fall down seven times? <laughs> or more? <laughs> Seventy times seven or more? <laughs> so we all miss it. Paul says that we all miss it in many ways. So if God was keeping a scorecard, if every time I missed it, and then you case you just crossed the line, you 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 said something you shouldn't have fifteen times today. I'm stripping your sonship from you. Not happening. It's not going to happen. He's a good God. He's a good God, and He loves us infinitely, passionately, perfectly. He loves us. He's for us. Thank you. Verse 21. Then Jesus, overflowing with the Holy Spirit's anointing of joy, exclaimed, Father, thank you, for you are Lord supreme over heaven and earth. You have hidden the great revelation of this authority from those who are proud, those wise in their own eyes, and you have shared it with those who humble themselves. Yes, Father, this is what pleases your heart. In the very way you've chosen to extend your kingdom, to give to those who become like trusting children. So one thing I want to point out here, I'll, just, I'll start at the end, is that God gives us that authority like trusting children. We are his trusting children. Right? But what's really, one thing that has really always blessed me when I've read this passage is Jesus was full of joy because they got it. They came back excited. And he's saying, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. They've got it. And so when we get it, and we step out, and we start doing this stuff, or we spend, or we're in our prayer closet, or we're just pressing in in our prayer closet, and we're setting somebody free somewhere else in our prayer closet, he's saying, thank you, Father. They've got it. She's got it. She's got it. Thank you, Father. She's got it. It blesses the Lord when we get it. He's not withholding anything from us. It blesses, blesses the Lord. Are there any parents out here that get excited when their little kids get it? Yeah. yeah. You know? Right? What's the difference? He's our father. And he wants us to get it. And uh, we pray these prayers in Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 3 all the time. Well, a lot, frequently. Every day or so. Asking for the wisdom, spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Asking that we can comprehend, give us the power to comprehend, you know, what he's got for us. Power to comprehend his love. Praise the prayer in the <coughs> Psalms uh, 119, 18, something like that, or 18, 19. Open my eyes, Lord, that I may see wonderful things in your word. In your law, actually, the Bible says law. But the word law isn't talking about all the ordinances necessary that were held against it. That word in the Hebrew is actually Torah, which means teachings. The first five books of the Bible it wasn't all, it wasn't all these 613 laws. It was the teachings. Open my eyes, Lord, that I may see wonderful things in your teachings. Right? And so I pray these prayers all the time. Because so I want to get it. Right? And you want to get it. You know, pray the Bible. You want to get it. Pray the Bible. These are these are Holy Ghost anointed prayers God moved on men right to pen the words of scripture <clears throat> it was his idea for them to write that if it's his idea then it's a good idea I think to say yeah I'm going to pray that way amen, amen. thank you Jesus Mark chapter 16, <clears throat> verse 15 to 18, then Jesus. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm 
I'm talking more than I normally talk. <laughs> <laughs> I am one of those people that I am perfectly content to sit quietly for hours oh, and never say anything. <laughs> and actually never hear anything either. I'm, I'm just fine with quiet. <laughs> I don't need the TV on, I don't need the stereo on. Wow. I'm fine with just quiet and I can say, and I can just sit there and soak with the Lord and say, Jesus, oh. Jesus. And I can so, sit there and say, thank you, Lord, for, for your amazing love. Yeah. I say that all the time. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love. I just meditate on the love of God. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love. <clears throat> he who believes and is baptized shall be saved, will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So this stuff's supposed to follow us. This stuff's supposed to follow us. Because right. that's what Jesus said. These signs to follow those who believe. Amen. That's our job description, you guys. It's part of our job description. <clears throat> Heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. You know, I've never raised anybody from the dead, but there's coming a day. You know, there's coming a day. Uh, I've read so many accounts of the dead being raised over the years. And uh, we have a uh, friend of sorts, acquaintance in Washington, Tyler Johnson, his ministry is called Dead Raising Team. Because he's got all kinds of faith to raise the dead. And people that have been affiliated with them have raised the dead. A lot of them. I don't know the numbers anymore, but the last thing I heard was like something like 27 people wow. through, the, through the affiliation with them. Not just Tyler and his family, but through their affiliation. 27 people were raised from the dead. I think that was the number. our job description. <clears throat> God has not changed his mind. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. Has not changed. Acts 28, 3, when Paul had gathered an armful of brushwood and was setting it on the fire, a venomous snake was driven out by the heat and latched on to Paul's hand with his fangs. When the islanders saw the snake dangling from Paul's hand, they said to one another, No doubt about it, this guy is a murderer. Even though he escaped death at sea, justice has now caught up with him. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire, and it was unhurt. Sometimes we get bit. It just happens. It just happens. Sometimes we get bit. You know, by by the serpent in one form or another, sometimes we just get bit. Whether it's whether it is a literal snake or a spider bite or somebody stabbing us in the back, right? Or sickness trying to latch onto us, sometimes we just get bit. We've got to shake that off. Because Jesus Christ has paid for our healing. Yes. Jesus Christ has paid for that healing. And Paul understood that. And Paul's like, oh my God, I had I thought I had a future, but it looks like I'm gonna die now. That's not the case at all. Paul knew he had a place to go. He knew he had things to do. So the serpent's not going to hold me back. And he just shook off into the fire. And that needs to be our mind. Is, is We have things to do. We have places to go. And we are not going to let that serpent, that snake bite, whatever it looks like, hold us back and prevent us from getting there. We're going to shake that off. In Jesus' name, we're going to shake it off. We're going to shake it off. In Jesus' name, shake it off. Jesus name right sometimes I have to go like this here because I just feel slimed you know sometimes I just feel slimed you ever feel slimed sometimes I just feel slimed and I just got to shake it off in Jesus name shake it off right Isaiah 54 I think it's 17 says um, no weapon formed against you will prosper but you will refute cast down every word of judgment that rises up against you you got some words of judgment rising up against you. 
Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. I cancel those words in Jesus' name. I cancel those words in Jesus' name. Even if you spoke. <laughs> right? Even if you spoke those words. Or your husband or your wife or your child. Or your boss. Spoke those words. Shake them off. Shake them off. Shake them off. Because those words will bring discouragement and defeat and despair and all that terrible stuff. But that stuff is not ours. Jesus has set us free. Jesus has set us free. All of us. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on up. Okay. <laughs> somebody that I wouldn't want to that I would be embarrassed to say in front of them. Right. I 
would rather stay in love. I'd rather stay in peace. Peace is invaluable. I tell you what, peace is really good stuff. <laughs> you know, I got this phone, you know, I got this watch here that, that uh, it, it measures my stress level. You know where my stress is? <laughs> it's in the beginning of the green. Which is a good thing. Which is a good thing. It's like, is my heart even beating? <laughs> <laughs> But if, if you need some ministry, yeah. then come up first for ministry. Whatever. So we're doing we're doing a couple of zooms a week. What we tell the people at the at the end of the meeting is 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 the lesson is over, but we're here for whatever you need. So we're here to pray with you. Oh yeah. So so we did bring some new people came in. We brought twenty men and twenty women's handkerchiefs that we laid hands on and prayed over and uh, just believe in my faith and, and you can feel it too the anointing going into them and of course we see the evidence in that we see the scriptural precedent for it handkerchiefs Acts 19.12 you know the cloth was taken from Paul and put on the given to the sick and they were healed we see people touching Jesus robe they didn't touch his body they just touched the cloth and getting healed, we see a dead man being thrown in on Elijah's bones. I don't know how long Elijah's been in the grave, but a dead man thrown in on his bones, and he came back to life. So we see the we see the anointing, the healing power of God present in material and cloth. How that works, I don't know, but it works. Also, Keith and I walk in faith with that verse, Romans 8, 2, that's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus frees me from the law of sin and death. That was what uh, John G. Lake believed that verse protected him from the black water fever in Africa. And he was carrying uh, dead bodies of the plague for weeks and weeks and weeks. And the doctors were like, how come you and your team aren't getting sick? And he said, because of Romans 8.2. And so he, he, he showed them under a microscope, he put some of the plague on his hand, some foam from the people's lungs, and it died on his hand. And so Keith and I walk in that faith about the virus or whatever. If it touches us, it's going to die. <laughs> God wants people free. Yeah. God wants people free. So you need some help. Somebody come alongside you and pray with you. We are, I don't know how many of us there are. There's a lot. A bunch of us here need to, uh, that are ready, willing,